talking weren't using a mic what's you going on here do you need the mic or not you guys got to run a better operation those hot dogs <laughs> those hot dogs suck yeah if you were in, if you lived if you served somebody a hot dog like yeah. that in new york you go to jail i know i know i didn't like the buns the buns were the buns good. are over bunned yeah so yeah. like that bun had that what's that women put there oh yeah how what's the audience any kids in here yes. any kids please raise, raise their hand all right we're good i think you're not a kid how old are you <laughs> 17? I mean 12 and under. <laughs> All right. Number one, my name is Ben Mala. I've been clean and sober for three, 30 days. <laughs> oh, that's the wrong meeting. What day is today? Saturday? Oh, that's tomorrow's meeting. <laughs> this is the what? Oh, yeah, this is the one where guns don't kill people do, right? <laughs> oh, we're here for real estate. I forgot. I'm getting old and forgetful. You know, you know, table, no nothing. You're gonna stand here and hold my book. Listen, number one, I've never, I did it one little one to these guys out in Tampa. I have never, ever stood in front of this many people and spoke before in my life. In Tampa, we had about maybe just that section. So, I want this on camera. I want proof. Everybody's gonna nod their head. Anything I say cannot be held against me in anywhere, any court, anywhere, period. Thank you. That's Frank Shevis. He owns a dozen restaurants where we live in uh, Tampa Bay area. So if anybody wants to know about the restaurant business, go bug Frank. Yeah, contact me if you want to get a buyer, okay? <laughs> He's also in the fish business. There's always something fishy about him. He was the guy that invented the stuffed flounder. But you don't want to know what he was stuffing it with back in the 80s. So anyway, here we are. I'm trying to wake up. Have you people been there all friggin' day stuck in this room? Are you, have you really? Oh my God. You don't put no water out, nothing. You know, come on. This is where we at, Palm fucking Beach? <laughs> Donald Trump just made this his home. And you don't even give us a fucking bottle of water in this joint. Oh, a cooler is empty over there with no cups. <laughs> oh, boy, oh boy. Anyway, okay, where are we at? I am very, very honored to be here. The last guy was really smart. Me and him sat in a room and he knows his shit. Okay, because me and him connected. I could tell he was hooked like a drug addict. That's what we say. You get hooked on real estate, and really you're hooked on money. Okay, let's get down to it. The real estate is just a car that's gonna take you there. Is this mic screwed up or is it me? <laughs> Good? Because I keep it. All right, here we go. That guy was smart and we connected because we both were hooked. We're addicts, okay? Um, and it's good to be hooked on money, especially the way my wife shops. <laughs> Holy shit, I want to find that goddamn Jewy, Ju Jimmy Chan and karate chop his ass. <laughs> uh, fucking prices, Chanel. Oh my God, these. All right, let's move on. Where was I? I was talking about the guy. Yeah, see, he knows his stuff, but I'm the opposite, okay? I am too. Can I say F-U-C-K in this room or what? Because I can't help it. Yeah. In New York, you're born with it. Is it okay? Is that your mother? Yeah. Okay. I got a 12-year-old here, but, you know, he's used to it, okay? <laughs> uh, his mother curses a lot, but in Spanish, luckily. Thank God I don't understand Spanish, because I don't want to understand the shit she says in Spanish to me. Uh, she changed my name from Ben to Bendejo. <laughs> She says that's my nickname. I don't know what it means, but it don't sound good. Where are we? Oh, yeah, I'm very honored to be here. You know, making a lot of money is great, but when you can help people and people appreciate spending time with you, money can't buy that. So it's really, truly an honor for me to be here. Uh, whoever these guys ought to invite to be here, I don't know. But no, they're really nice guys. They took us out to a really fancy dinner over at... Uh, Bellagio, but then the sign said, Il Bellagio, 
ill. It don't sound good for a restaurant. But the food was great, and they, they, they put out a really big bill. I brought like 10 people with me. Oh, shit, free dinner? Hell yeah, I invited everybody. Hey, you want to have dinner at Bellagio? <laughs> I took those guys in for a couple of grand. The way my wife drinks, and she drinks the good stuff. Shit, you can't give her a regular margarita. She better get that Don Pedro. So, where are we at? Oh, yeah, all right, so getting back to it. You know, what he does and, and all this stuff and all these courses and busting your head, running around, looking for people that are dead in the house and it's great and it works for them. But I'm too fucking lazy. I'm not doing all that shit. Everybody in this room, I can guarantee everybody in this room has the power to make it in real estate if you use the tools that you naturally, naturally have. I wish somebody would do me a favor because I didn't do it. My son will do it, Aaron. Do me a favor and see if you can Google how many real estate agents are there in just the state of Florida. See if you can Google that for me. Wow. We'll get back to you. You got, I would not be nowhere today. Nowhere, forget it. Out of, I don't know how many deals I did. I mean, but, Nowhere would I be if it wasn't for real estate agents. Because they devote their life. They're, they're, that's their bread and butter, to sell real estate. That's how they make their money. And the beauty of it is, as the buyer, and the buyer's the smart one, normally, because he's buying. If you're buying, there better be a reason why you're buying it, because the day you make the money is the day you buy it. Okay, you know, when you bought that house for 150 grand, you know damn well you can slap some paint on it, do whatever you gotta do, and sell for 200. You know, that's the day you made your money. I got a cold, by the way, I'm sorry. I also got an infected leg. It still didn't stop me from coming here. I'm not gonna show you. I don't wanna disgust anybody. <clears throat> but anyway, real estate agents work for free. You got professional people that have devoted their lives to a career for free. The, the seller pays it. Now, when you're on the selling side, it's part of the game. You know, you're the one making money. You're selling the deal. The real estate commission, you know, they're going to pay them. And let me tell you how I get all the deals. This is a secret. I don't want nobody in this room telling anybody outside this room my secret to winning over real estate agents. Does everybody swear? Raise your hand. Swear. I tell you, tell you, not the truth. Say I do. Thank you. All right, you snuck in, lady. Just say I do. When I get married, I'm already married. I get in jail for that. Uh, you did. Uh, how did everything go okay? You wash your hands? Good. All right. You need to hook up with people who are out there every day with access to the MLS and access to stuff. You can look on your own, okay? And I'll tell you how to deal with that when you find them on your own. The whole thing is you got to try to get that deal. And let's face it, in this market, you got a hundred people chasing the same goddamn deal, making offers. Right now, it's a bad market, okay? So basically, we're just, but it's a good time for you to gear up for the, when the market turns, and it's gonna turn. It's a cycle, it has to turn. Things get really good, and things get really bad. We're just in overtime right now. Things should start getting bad every 10 years. Every 10 years is a cycle. But interest rates are low, and, and, and people made a lot of money on their sales, so it's, it's put us in overtime. But sooner or later, the shit's going to hit the fan, trust me. May not be, it'll be this year or next year, okay? You're going to see prices go down. And I can tell you why, but I don't want to bore you to a long whatever. The point is, if you're in the business and you want to buy or sell real estate, number one, use the, the broker to do all the work for you. Let the agent get out there. Let them know what you're looking for. Before we even get to the agent, I kind of jumped over the most important person, the banker. Where are you going to get the money? If you got 200 grand in the bank, you don't want to sink a whole goddamn 200 grand on a deal. You want to sink about 20 or 40 grand of it or whatever you got. Let's say you got no money. Okay? You need to get the bank's money. The bank, everything I do is on the bank's money mostly. If it wasn't the banks, I wouldn't have nothing. Banks and brokers, they give you the money, they make money off of giving you the money, and the real estate agents sell you the property, okay, and that's how you make the deals. 
You use professional people that know the business, and it cuts out all the bullshit and a waste of time. Sit down with a bank and be pre-approved. You don't have to have the property. Go into a bank and say, hey, I want to buy a fourplex. Here's my credit, here's my tax return, my W-9, whatever the hell they want. Give them whatever they want. They want paperwork, give them paperwork. I mean, yeah, you got to have decent credit. You got to have some sort of income, you know. And then you say, you tell me what loans do I qualify for? You know, FHA, three and a half percent down, three thirty-five hundred on every hundred grand. You can buy one to four apartments on an FHA loan or a VA loan. You know, don't be afraid to look into the first time. Home buyer programs, if you fit in that category, use anything anybody's willing to give you. If somebody's willing to give you something, the government, the city, who the hell cares? Take it. I bought a building not too long ago where the city had a mortgage on it where if I took over that mortgage, it was 1%. Hell yeah, I'm going to take over that mortgage. Okay, whatever deals you can make, make deals with city and fire. That's why you need to get with the bankers. They know all the programs. They know the rates. They know what you need. If you're not ready to get that loan, they'll tell you what you need to do to get the loan, whether it's your credit score, whether it's this or that, whatever. They're there to, to loan you money because that's how they make money. They don't make money any other way. A bank makes money on taking the money they got sitting on deposit and the money they get for the federal government. They get at a really cheap rate, they add on a couple of percent, and then they lend it to you. That's how the bank makes money. That's it. So they're in business to loan you money. And they don't care what color you are. They don't care how old you are. Well, I don't know. I don't know about 90, but, you know, they don't care. They don't care who you sleep with, anything. They don't give a damn. You're a number. All you are is a number to them and a profile. And then you need to know how much money you get out of the bank, how much money you need to put down, they do all that for you. They're professionals. Don't waste your time trying to do every goddamn thing yourself. You'll never get nowhere. It's too much. That's why we got bankers. We got real estate agents. We have title companies, you know, escrow companies. We've got lawyers. When you start getting into deals, more than four units. If it's more than four units, you might want to think about using a lawyer. But see if that lawyer can also act as the escrow agent. And if there's anybody here from a title company, don't get pissed at me or an escrow company. The lawyer can handle everything. And he makes money off of selling you the title insurance. So he really doesn't have to charge you a fee. You can actually do that. T see if your lawyer can sell you the title insurance. Then you kind of cut out the, you know, the middle person of selling it to the lawyer. And all that. He can buy it direct and make money. Anyway, I I'm begging you. Don't, you know, if you want to try your hand and knocking on doors and cold calling and whatever they do, that's great. God bless you. I can't do it. And find any agent. There's thousands of them out there, okay? And then if you see something for sale that you're interested in online or, you know, somewhere, and ha or you drive by and it has a sign, you Google it up, you look at what the, you know, may need a little work or whatever, call the listing agent. Don't waste your time with Joe Schmo. Call the agent that's listing it. You know why? Because if they double end that deal, they're going to make more money. Who's the buyer they're going to want to give that property to? The one that makes the agent more commission. So try to work with the listed agent. And if an agent finds you a good deal, you'll have that agent hooked on you for life. Because all you got to do is one thing. When you go to sell that property, if you do, you give it back to the agent that found it to you because that shows loyalty. And that agent will always feed you the deal over somebody else because they're gonna have reoccurring income from you. You're gonna be, oh shit, hell yeah, I'm gonna sell it to him over this person because I know in about a year or two, he's gonna give it back to me and let me make more money on it. I've had agents make four commissions on me on the same building. He made money when he sold it to me. He made money when he sold it for me. We bought it back because the guy didn't know what the hell he was doing. He made a commission there, and he made a commission when I sold it again. He made four commissions off of one deal. And let me tell you, that commission was a couple hundred grand on that deal each time. I bet agents make millions on me, and I was happy of every penny they got. Because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have had the deal. You use professional people. These people are studied, they're trained, they're in the business, they're doing it every day. You use professional people, especially because they're free. You know, I had notes here to go by, but are we good with that? That's my opinion. Use agents. No time for questions. Okay, here we go. 
and go to the bank and find out how much money they'll back you up with. The bank is your daddy. <laughs> hey, call it what you want. The bank's got the money. Just like I'm her daddy, the bank's my daddy. Everybody's got a daddy. All right, bear with me here. Like I said, it's my first time. All right, just to give me a feel. Anybody here have a multifamily over five or more units? You didn't make five yet? You make, you're making more kids. I seen you with two kids out there. Stop making so many kids and make some more real estate deals. I'm just kidding. All right, anybody here got five or more units, rentals? One guy there, a couple there. So I'm not going to go, you guys are pretty smart already, you know, I'm going to tell you one thing, if you want to buy more multifamily, the biggest problem you got today is do your due diligence. You know, I asked my son, hey, by the way, because I let my son handle all this shit when I buy property now. You know, he gives me a list with about 50 things that he personally goes through, which I'm going to put on our website. Uh, he made this list a mile long, I had to make the print tiny so it fit on one page, I can't even read it. A million, there's just so many things you gotta worry about. You know, do your homework. You don't want no surprises when you buy something. You know, but I'll put that on the website. You guys got multifamily. Check my due diligence list out, okay? Because, you know, the reason why we know so much is because of our mistakes. We learn from our mistakes. So, you gotta check out the property you're gonna buy. Okay, what else we got here? Da -da 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 -da. I said that already. I was asked to come here tonight. I already said that. What else we got? I want to thank everyone for coming. No, we're not up to that yet. Um, you know, well, we're over, sorry. Man, these are lousy notes. Who wrote these notes, Aaron? Okay. Insurance. Okay, I'm just gonna tell you right now, we thought this world was too happy. This world is crazy too happy. I mean, I got a, a, a person, you know, if you bought, let me just forget about me, don't worry about you, we're here for you, okay? I don't care what you buy. If you buy a house or anything, I don't care if it's a mobile home and you're renting and collecting money from a tenant, you better have liability insurance besides the regular insurance you got to protect the property. CYA, cover your ass, because the legal fees alone will kill you. I mean, everybody's suing for no reason, you know? So if you're gonna find yourself at any moment or point buying real estate, you better have a good agent and you better cover yourself with liability. So you can buy blankets of liability, cheap, really cheap. The first million is what they get you on, 100 grand and 500 grand and a million. That's where it gets expensive. To buy above that is not that expensive, you know, but today a million bucks, somebody will sue you. Man, I had people in a hotel, they dropped whatever they were carrying on the floor, it busted, they slip and fall and cut themselves, and they suing me. <laughs> you dropped a goddamn jar and shit, and, and now you, and I'm getting sued. Figure that out. <laughs> I can tell you some horror stories. I mean, I've had some rough properties. When I first got to Florida, shit, I made the mistake. I thought Orlando was like Disney World. <laughs> Orlando is like some rough ass parts of Orlando, let me tell you. You know, I bought a building there and three, three, I mean, they're dead. They can't do, I mean, three drug dealers were shot in the apartment by one drug dealer. <laughs> All three families sued me. None of them lived in the goddamn building. <laughs> There was not one man on the lease. It couldn't, it was impossible. And they sued me. It took, and, and you know, I didn't have the proper insurance. Luckily, that one didn't bite my ass. He could have. You know, because just running up the legal fees, fighting. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. You know, if you're, the legal fees will kill you and the aggravation. So always properly insure yourself on any property where people are entering or, or renting or whatever. What else we got to talk about here? You know, most people here just trying to get started. Is that what you're trying to do? Okay, you know, you really need to try to go, if you don't have the 20% down, I mean, let's talk about mortgage brokers. When I first started, you know, you got brokers that sell real estate and you have brokers that sell mortgages. Is everybody familiar with what a mortgage broker does or is? Anybody say no? 
Everybody knows uh, what a mortgage broker is. It's a guy that takes your situation. Okay, I want to buy this house here. I want to buy this fourplex, whatever the hell it is. I need a loan. This guy's got access to a thousand banks, maybe. And he'll know what banks fit your situation because every bank's different. He'll know who's hungry, who's not hungry. He'll take a property in this neighborhood, but you're going to pay him. You can negotiate his fee, too. Don't be ever afraid to negotiate with people. You know, negotiate with everybody. I negotiate with everybody. Shit, I was trying to negotiate with the paper boy. Um, you know, is this Sunday paper really going to cost me a dollar? Anyway, these are the guys, again, you're hiring professionals that are trained and make their bread and butter every day in doing what you're hiring them to do. That's what you need in your life. You need all these smart, I never went one day to high school. I swear to God, I never, I did step in the door, but then I went out the back door. <laughs> I, it was different back in the 70s in New York, you know? I didn't need to go to school learn to get high. I got high on my own easily, taught myself. Anyway, I never went one day to high school. I need lawyers, I need real estate people, I need bankers, I need mortgage brokers. I don't use them anymore because, you know, I go right to the bank now. But the mortgage brokers taught me how to deal with the banks. So use professional people. Make sure they're honest professional people. Did I see you on American Greed once? <laughs> what are you going clean now? You trying to start over? You were the stock guy on American Greed, weren't you? Had all those big fancy yachts in Miami and everybody's money. Anyway, listen, I, I can't stress enough. Your credit, you're only as good as your credit. You have no face. I'm sorry. And it's, it's fair that way. Real estate and banking is fair to everybody. It's all about who you are and what you're about, you know, and, and can you be trusted with money? You have to prove to them, you can trust me. You know, and you can start at the, you know, with FHA. My first loan was a VA loan with no money down because I went in the army. And I got out honorably, by the way. <laughs> Almost. Well, so seriously, you got to look at your situation. What tools do you, you have tools, okay? You might need some money to put down. It's good to have money. It's always good to have saved money. Whatever you're doing for a living, you need to have something to get started. You can't just say, I want to go in real estate and, and wave a magic wand. It ain't gonna happen. Maybe if you're a veteran, maybe. But you know, you gotta have some kind of money saved away. Money in the bank will always protect your ass. Anything in the world can happen. If you got money, let's face it, you're protected. You know, I mean, they say money can't buy everything. All right, I can't buy the interaction we're having right now. Um, but, you know, money will protect you in life, protect your family. You know, you always got to have that nest egg. Have that emergency money in there. I don't care if it's five grand, ten grand, something. You know, especially the price of things these days. Save money, get with a mortgage broker, or walk into a bank if you want. If you're friendly in your branch, say, hey, I want to talk to the loan officer here. I want to buy this duplex. How much money you loan me? Simple questions. They're trained to give you a quick, simple answer. You know, they know what they're doing. Let them look at all the, 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 you know what's good? By them doing all their homework, it helps me because I got a second pair of eyes. I got the bank looking at the deal. They hire appraisers that are gonna put their license behind the deal, saying it's worth that much. These are all people that help you put the whole thing together. You know, professional people that are trained. I don't know, you know, I mean, I know because I've been doing it 30 years, but starting out, I didn't know shit. You got to work with professional people if you want to be professional, okay? I was a, a, a dropout from the worst neighborhoods in New York without a pot to piss in. And in the Army, didn't move me much more out of the pot. All they did was, I don't know, gave me some water in a pot. But the point is, you can do it. S sit down and figure out. What do I want to try to do? You know, do I want to try my hand at a duplex, a triplex, a fourplex? Start small, you can always grow. You don't want to go too big, because sometimes you find, hey, you know, don't get it over your head. If somebody makes you sign on that dotted line, you're going to pay X amount of dollars a month for that mortgage, you better make sure you can do it. You know, you got to have a there's risk in everything. There's risk in real estate. If you got four apartments and you're counting on three of them to pay all the bills and that one apartment is your profit and that apartment moves out and you ain't got no rent coming in, then your ass is working for free. 
and I don't want to work for free and I don't want liabilities with no benefit, you know. So, you know, seriously, go meet a banker, get a mortgage broker, find agents. And if you don't like the agent, you don't feel like the agent's going to help you, fuck them. Sorry. <laughs> Move on to the next one. You know, the best agents to call are the ones selling the type of properties you're looking at. Go on, if you see a shitty house, they say, you know what, I think I can fix that house up and I could probably rent it out or I could flip it and make some money. Call the listing agent, they're already in that business. I knew a guy, he would drive up and down the mobile home parks, okay, trying to buy every mobile home he could. And let me tell you, he made money because he rented out the space, he bought the mobile home for practically nothing. Mobile homes, nobody, the, the, the park gets them when people just walk away from them. There are parks, at least there are in the mid part of Florida, that if you walk in, they'll give you the mobile home. Take it. If you're willing to fix it up a little and pay the lot rent. That's all they want is a lot rent. They don't want to be in a landlord business. You know, I knew a guy, he'd go around, he'd get mobile homes for practically pennies and a dollar. And then he'd pay the lot rent, he'd put some paint on him, he'd rent them out or he'd fix them up and sell them. You know, but you're doing something, you know? There's 55 and over properties, that's a whole nother market you can get into. You can buy them cheaper because not everybody can buy them. Only 55 and over can buy them. But there's a flip side to that. You buy them cheaper, but you're gonna sell them cheaper. But you're gonna rent them for the same price. You will get the same amount of money in a 55 over property as you will in a market property. Rent is all about location. There's plenty of people over 55 you can rent to that, you know, that'll pay the same money as a 45 year old or whatever. Whatever it is you can do, do. But you gotta have the banks, you gotta have the brokers, the agents, you gotta have professional people helping you. Don't be afraid to ask for help. The squeaky wheel gets all the grease. And it's true. And don't get discouraged when you, you oh man, I'm tired. I made it off running a house and I didn't get it. Listen, you gotta throw a hundred things up to the ceiling sometimes for one thing to stick. If it was so easy, we'd all be filthy rich. You know, so you just can't get, you know, frustrated. You gotta get out there, you need the money, whatever it takes to get it, legally. <laughs> and then find a person that's gonna get out there and bird dog these things for you. They already know what you're looking for. They cut through all the bullshit. They save you time. You should find an agent, you tell an agent tomorrow, listen, show me every house under 150,000, if they exist. I don't know, maybe I go to Opa Locker or somewhere, wherever. Listen, you know, I'm gonna tell you, I made, if it wasn't for the Section 8 program, if it wasn't for HUD, if it wasn't for all these programs that the government helps, you know, in the rougher, and it's gonna be a tougher neighborhood, fine. You know, but you can always move the neighborhood up. You know, you come in there, you fix up a house, you rent it to a nice family. You know, just because they're a poor neighbor doesn't mean the family's bad. I mean, you know, you can do it. You can, you can go in a rough neighborhood, you know, make sure it's not too dangerous where you can still go there, you know, and fix it up, you know, rent it out, go to the house in the dark, you say, hey, I got a house for rent. You know how much they'll pay for a three bedroom house these days? I mean, I don't know, but it's big money, okay? And then figure it out. If I buy this house for X million dollars, my mortgage is going to be X amount of dollars, my taxes is going to be X amount of dollars, my insurance is going to be X amount of dollars, what am I left with? It's a simple equation, okay? So it's all, real estate is really simple. And when it gets difficult or hard, you hire professionals to help you, which most of them are free. So that's the story. I don't know what else to talk about. Let me see here. What do we got? <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to go talk about crazy stuff that nobody's going to bore you to death. I'm not going to stand here and tell you how rich I am and all this bullshit. You know, uh, deals. deals. I need a deal. I can't find a deal right now. I'm in the damn hotel business changing people's sheets because we ran out of apartment buildings to buy. I mean, I almost bought a friggin' nursing home. That's how desperate I am. I'm gonna be in there changing bedpans and shit. I mean, real estate, I'm gonna tell you right now, real estate is at a height. Most of the numbers don't make sense. It's gonna change, but the harder you look, the more you'll find. All right, you, if you look hard enough, there'll always be a deal out there, okay? You just gotta go out there and drive them and look at them. Are most of the people in this room looking for houses or what? You're looking for a house just basically to buy? 
How many houses do you have already? It's like Monopoly. First you buy the house, then you turn four houses into a hotel. But in our case, an apartment building. It's playing Monopoly. So multifamily, do you have any now? Uh, no, I... Do you have one casa? <laughs> Un casa. <laughs> you have a single home? Do you rent that or you live on? <laughs> My wife's shaking her head, no. Stone pick on the Spanish people. <laughs> okay, you got one house, you rent it? You know, you start with houses, you go to duplexes, you go to triplex, you go to fourplex, you go to five, you go to 20, you go to 30, you go to 40. That's the way it worked for me. If you got a house now, you need to get any money you can, your hands on it, pull it out of the house, uh, call Venezuela. I mean, um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm really in trouble with that one. Um, go look for a duplex. Is it a problem renting that house? Any problem? I started with a duplex. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys another secret here. You ready? Nobody, oh, all right. Come on, lady. Talk to my wife, she speaks Spanish. I'm just kidding. Italiano? Italiano, oh my God, I just came back from Italy for a whole week. Thank God I'm home. I thought Italians, they were such artists. Everything, they had graffiti everywhere, and the Coliseum, why don't you fix the Coliseum up? The damn thing is a fall apart, looks like it's a thousand years old. Oh no, it's 2,000 years old. I'm not gonna mess with her. Her people used to feed people to the lions. I'll leave her alone. Okay, next secret, are you ready? If, now this happened to me, it could happen to you. When I was in the Bay Area in California, they had Victorian homes. It was an old part of town, Oakland. I'd come across a lot of these big old houses. They had all these damn rooms, but you didn't need them. You know, people only use like, they had, uh, you know, I mean, I didn't even know what a family room was until like I was 30. I never heard of a family room, you got a living room. Here, everybody's got living room, they got family room, dining room. The only dining room I knew was at McDonald's when I was a kid. And you want to go to the drive-thru or you want to go in the dining room? <laughs> anyway, where was I at? Okay, so here's my secret. Close that door. <laughs> oh, I don't trust you. You're the Jewish guy out there pushing something. You get out. <laughs> you go and you find these houses. You look at, look at Squid. Tell you if you find an agent. Tell the agent you are specifically looking for larger square footage. Okay, because square footage means more money. Yeah. Okay, when I was in Oakland, it, it came, you know, I was taught some of this too by, by a guy, you know, the guy that, he was a smart guy. He, he taught me how to do everything, then he goes and flies around the country and lives like a king while I'm in, doing all the work. But if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here today. Thank God he's not here today. All right, <laughs> you want big square footage, you know why? When you rent out properties, residential properties, you charge, not by the square foot. The owners kind of look at what they're, what they're getting per square foot when you buy and sell. You get more money for more bedrooms. And you might have a two bedroom, but if you throw a thousand bucks into putting up some studs, some sheetrock, it has to have a window in the room. I have taken huge bedrooms and split them down the goddamn middle. No, I split them this way. You had a window here, a window here. You have to find out what the minimum square footage you need for a bedroom. But if you've got a, a single a parent, a family that needs four or five bedrooms, they don't care if the rooms are small. They just want their kids in a bedroom, you know, I mean, that's all they can afford. So a lot of times you can take a one bedroom if it has a dining room, you don't get no more rent for dining rooms. Eat in a goddamn living room and watch TV. <laughs> My kid tries to eat in his room now. Um, bedrooms is, is bigger money, let's face it. We all know that, it's all common sense. 
If you could turn a studio and throw a freaking wall up and make it a one bedroom, why do you make a studio to begin with? I don't know. I've had that happen. I've seen one bedrooms that you can carve out of space. Sometimes you may have to do, you know, maybe even if you spend 2,000 bucks doing some interior modifications, you need a window, you need a closet, and the closet ain't gotta be that big. And your room has to be a certain size. Back in Oakland, back then, was 77 square feet. Yes, 77 was small. I give you that. I'm not trying to treat people bad. I made it 80. <laughs> and I used to, I'm not kidding you. I, when I was young, I didn't care. I was hooked. I was a drug addict. I was a real estate drug addict. I mean, I would take... I would have guys that, I'd find these guys on the street, you know, and whatever. I'd catch them on a good day. They could swing a hammock. They knew how to do shit. I, you know, whatever. I'd find not the best contract to say. I had no money. And I would tell the guy, and he'd look at me. I'd say, I want this closet exactly the size of this hang. I'd give him a hanger. i see, from the wall to the end of this hanger, that's where you stop the closet. <laughs> And give me enough room for about six hangers. That's it. You know, you do what you got to do. And you know what? I took a lot of people, but I made these places nice, and I made them safe, and I made them decent. They had smoke detectors. They're fresh. You know, you got to pass a section A inspection. You're not going to be giving out no garbage. I mean, you know, so you're giving a family a decent place and roof over their head. That's the main thing, okay? And especially if somebody can't find... I used to do... Yeah, I got hooked. I got so hooked, I started doing five bedrooms. And you know what I found out? No competition. Nobody in the entire city of Oakland had five bedroom places for these people. And let's face it, we got some active folks in Oakland, you know, they had seven or eight kids, you know, or six kids or mama got to live with her, you know, whatever, you know, big families. You got the grandmother, you got the, the mother, you got the boys. You got, I mean, it's just the way it is. That's life. There was a need for that housing. And they paid dearly for it because a three bedroom was a grand. You get about an extra $200 a month at least, or two fifty dollars for every bedroom you got. It starts off where you had about a two bedroom back then, it was a eight hundred. Three was a thousand. Four was twelve. Five was fourteen. They might even give you an extra hundred for hitting the five mark. It was like fifteen hundred bucks a month. I was paying forty thousand dollars for these houses. And I was turning them into $1,500 a month rentals, all by throwing up some walls and sheetrock. And you do it legally. Don't do anything illegal. Because you don't want to get busted. It's not worth it. You know, get a permit. It's not that hard. If you're not changing the footprint of the house itself, and you're just working with the guts of it inside, it's not that big of a deal, as long as you do everything to code. Put the wire where it's supposed to be. Yeah, you hire people like that to do this stuff. You go on Craigslist. You know, you let a guy come over, hey, how much to throw a wall up here and wire it? The guy will give you a price, oh, 800 bucks, fine, do it. You know, you make sure you get a permit, and I want to see the permit, you tell them. You know, and that's it. You can follow the permit yourself if you want. So, take what you got and try to maximize the amount of value you can squeeze out of it. It's like what my wife does to a lemon when she's drinking tequila. She's going to get every drop of juice out of that lemon. And me. I got to stop talking about getting real trouble. Yesterday was our 16th anniversary. You can still get married at 12 in Mexico. That was a bad joke. Okay. All right. What else? So if everybody here is just looking to get started, please go to the bank. Get loan. If you already started, still go find out what's your maximum amount of money you can borrow. They want to loan it to you. It's sitting in the damn vault waiting for you. They need to loan you money. And they're the ticket to your success because out of 100%, they're going to put up whatever. Some deals 75, 80, 85, 90 with the government, 96.5 or 97. They got the bulk of the money, you got a little bit, but you're running the show. Another thing is this, when you hire all these people, you're in the driver's seat. You are the main engine that's putting them to work, that's got that real estate agent out there fine to look for deals and make them money, they got to support their family. You become the head, what do you say in Spanish, cojuna? You speak Spanish? The jefe. At first, they used to all call me the jefe. I said, I'm tired of these motherfuckers calling me a cow. 
Then my wife said, no, that means boss. So anyway, seriously, go to the bank, find out how much money you got to work with, get any kind of loan you can, make sure your credit's cleaned up or do whatever they tell you to do. Whatever they tell you to do to get their money, you do it, get their money. Okay, worry about making that money because once you start, you know, making that money, all your problems are solved. And then find that real estate agent that's willing to go out there and send you a little email. All they're doing is they got an alert system when anything new comes on the market, and they can do searches of everything that's on the market. Listen, I like stuff that's on the market. Everybody talks about off market, off market, or this house is sitting there. Who the hell knows who owns? I got time to deal with trusts and all that bullshit. Listen, I want to do deals where I know those deals are ready and ready to rock and roll and sell. And those are the ones that are on the market. And those are the ones the real estate agents are trying to move. Okay, I want action, baby. I ain't got time to write letters and all this bullshit. No offense to anybody doing it. You know, I'm not a fucking secretary. I'm a boss. All right. I tell the agent and everybody in this room is a boss. You can call up any Century 21 agent, anybody you want. There's plenty of people sitting in that office waiting to help you as long as you can perform. Okay. So as long as you can, you have the ability with the money from the bank to close that deal, they'll love you, okay? Because they get paid from that sale. And you have them send you, let, have, find an agent that's willing to send you every, every day or every week, everything that's on the market in your price range. First you find out what your price range is, then you tell the agent, this is my price range, show me everything on the market. Then you get in your car and you drive around and you try to think about which deal you like and which one makes sense. The agent's going to tell you, too, because they know the business. Then you find the right deal, you make the offer, you get the deal at the right price. The agent does all that for you. You ain't doing shit. All you're doing is sitting back like a big shot on the phone. Here, yeah, offer another five grand. I mean, that's all you do. You're calling the shots. To own real estate, you're a shot caller. Except we ain't moving the wrong kind, you know, illegal stuff. We're doing legal shit here. Anyway. Find an agent, go to the bank, find how much money you can get. That's real estate. The rest of it, it all comes to you naturally. Anything else? Cut it short. We're done. Right, my friend's telling me, I got to get back there. It's almost time for the restaurant to get busy. <laughs> oh all right. Anybody? Oh, we got somebody else coming on now, right? Yes. Okay, Mr. Miller, right? Yes. Very good. I thank you for the privilege to come here and see everybody. <laughs> And, uh, oh, oh, wait, wait, I'll get in really trouble. I'll get in a lot of trouble now. Where, where are we at? The Polish guy that, that runs the whole YouTube thing. Rafael, what do you want me to tell him? This is your YouTube channel. What is my YouTube channel? <laughs> my name? So what do they do? They go, Ben Mal. Listen, I want everybody, please, take a business card. And Rafal did something where you put your camera on it and it locks you right to the website or the YouTube channel because we need more views so Rafal can keep eating Polish sausage. Okay, because all the money, it ain't much money. We do have a fun, you know, but it gives him a living, you know, he, you know, he sends a little money home to mama. So please, everybody get a business card from my middle and young uh, first son, uh, last son. Last, sorry, baby, last. <laughs> My two sons at the door, get a business card. You can email me. I'll try my best to, to respond as soon as I can and watch the YouTube video so Rafal can eat polo sausage. What's the website? The website. What's the website? You got a new website, don't you? Benmala.com. Benmala.com. That's pretty simple. I hope you didn't pay for that shit. <laughs> you went to that freaking GoDaddy? They're rich bastards. GoDaddy. Shit, that's the daddy with the money. All right, thank you very much for coming in. I'll be around. We're not going to do the question thing or what? Anybody really got a question? Come on, you can email me, I promise I'll respond. But anybody got an important question? Like a, they're in the middle of a deal right now or something, what? Question? Every business, a property I buy, do I what? Do you protect them? Do you put them in an LLC? Every property I buy is always a separate LLC, which means little li limited liability company. Right? Company, yeah. It protects you to where if you get in trouble on that asset, 
They can't come after you personally. You're not supposed to come after you personally. But the lawyers are vultures these days. I don't even know if that's the best protection, but so far it's worked for me. Everything I got is a separate business, and you're the president of that business. Every house you buy that's a rental, anything you buy, you make an LLC, and you're the managing member of that LLC. You know, and uh, it's your business. Every biz every house is a business. It's bringing in money, it's got money in, it's got money out. It's a business. You just don't have to be there so you can have a whole shitload of them. <laughs> All right, you good? Yeah, you. All right. Question. How did you, how did, in this day and age, do you think Section 8 is still feasible and a feasible way of making Money? Listen, when you got a piece of real estate, you want to look at who's the best person that I can grab to rent to and who's going to give me the most money. A lot of times, you know, if you're in an area that's kind of rough, you might want to go with Section 8 because it's guaranteed. You know, they're going to put that money in your bank account every month. The tenant's going to pay you a small portion based on their income. Okay? I like the guarantees because if I had to collect rents in Oakland back in the 80s, I wouldn't be getting nothing. I used to take TVs. I take. I had to bring my my my. I take people's motors. They give me their motorcycles, whatever. You want Section Eight because your money's guaranteed. You make that mortgage payment, you know. But if you don't need to rent to them and you get the same money from the open market from a, a great tenant that makes three times the income and it's got money in the bank and you know if you could, then you know it's up to you. Okay. One last question. So, uh, how, I already got a couple of houses. How do I go from? from houses to multifamily to commercial real estate? You gotta look at the brokers specialize. If you go to every brokerage firm there is, they got your big shop brokers selling 100 plus units. You got your middle brokers selling 50 to 100. You got your new guys starting out selling the duplexes and the fourplexes. Go to the broker that sells the product you want. That's the only way I know how to find it. Okay, very good. Yeah. Have a good night. <laughs> Thank you very much. We want to thank the NREIC National Real Estate Investment Club. We're here in Palm Beach, baby. They invited us down. They took us out to a fabulous dinner. We're in the heart of city center, West Palm Beach, where it's jumping. Come on in, sir. Am I good? With it? Come on in. Hurry up. You're on camera. <laughs> There you go. I don't want to be all right. Manager, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> I know, I know. They're looking for you, senor. John and Jeff are the big shots that run the organization. And you can count on these guys to help you out. You need to get a hold of the club. You need to join the club. If you live in Palm Beach, they talk to you, right? So if you're smart, you want to learn about real estate, you want to get with people that know what you're doing, you need to get with these guys here, okay? So thank you very much for inviting me. I'm sorry I brought an entire army with me. <laughs> and and you got me off the hook for my anniversary, which I really appreciate. Uh, and I gotta get rest tonight. I gotta be rested. So thanks very much for everything, for having us, thank inviting you us. For, you know, we're honored to be here. We're honored to have you. Man, that tiramisu looks good, boy.